Request is coming from our sister Ruth Wati. She says, Shalom, saints, please permit me to pay my vows unto the Lord. Last two years at Cape Coast Convention, I put a petition before the Lord and He has done it for me. In view of this and many wonderful things the Lord has done for me and my family. He said, who would like to sing, but we'll handle that later. Praise be his holy name, and thanks be to God. Amen. There's an offering here for it. Let's bow down our heads while we invite Brother Maunyo to pray for us. Father Lord, we thank you so much. We don't have words to express our gratitude. Because you live, Lord Jesus. That is why we gather here, Lord, this morning to celebrate you. For without you, we can do absolutely nothing. We thank you for your grace which has been upon us since the beginning of the year. The battles that you fought for us, the deliverance that you wrote for us. Lord, we appreciate everything, everything. Lord, we gather here, Lord, to worship this morning. All by ourselves, we can do nothing. Therefore, we ask, eternal God, that you anoint us with the spirit of worship. So that we'll break through the veil of flesh and enter in the spirit and worship in spirit and in truth. We thank you so much, O oh Lord, for what you've done for our sister, Ruth Forty. He said he took a vow before you and you've answered it. We are so thankful for you, for your faithfulness. We commit the service this morning unto you, all the offering. The worship, the ministration. Lord, we want you to be part of it and help us also to be part of it. As your word comes forth, we ask that you give us the revelation thereof and the faith to act upon your word. We commit our brothers, our sisters who are on the way coming. Just as you brought us here safely, we pray that you bring them here safely. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing these two songs before I call my sister. The size of the spiral. Should I 
He will safely carry us through. Amen. Let's welcome our sister. Shalom, church. Merry Christmas and a, a prosperous and healthy year for all of you. I want to thank God for his grace and mercy upon me and upon my family. If it has not been the hand of the Lord by this time, my husband and myself, we are already dead. Thank you all for all you did, the ministers, the deacons, the trustees, everybody, your prayers and everything you did really was a blessing to us. God richly bless all of you. I'm dedicating this song to our brother Ellis on the occasion of his birthday. Ni yeli lei ate kule mana kena buhu ate kule mawo ni be maji o nyomo mi ilai ni majaje kemi chuife. Next meal to be the Marisol. 
For he turned our lives around, and he is the only one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. For he has the final say, and no other man. Hallelujah. Word of God, ever true. Say. Oh, 
Holy Wells, Holy Wells, long preserved for our walk in this ordinary sound, every sound we've gone so Sacrifice. away from the flesh, O Lord, grant us the grace for us to be in your spirit. Forgive us of our pleased ways and anything that we've done against the perfect will. We ask, O Lord, that you help us once again. You know what our individual needs are, and we pray, dear God, that you speak to it. That I encourage us, the Lord, take us to our highs and the protest of our work. What we need is a closer world we day. Help us, O God. This is a prayer with all thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Oh, please, you can have your seats. want to welcome ourselves to this morning's service. Oh, no, usually we are, but uh, uh, today being a, a holiday, uh, we deem it free to uh, come into the house of God and uh, worship our God and to hear a portion of the word and to check on to salvation with it and to see how we're faring in the things of God. So we are here to worship him. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, the Lord himself pointed us more to his death than even to his birth. And uh, we find we uh, also know that this originated uh, with the Roman Catholic Church and uh, it has become so a commercial a thing. Yeah, that's not the purpose why we are here. We are here to worship him. Not Jesus in the manger, uh, but uh, Jesus in our hearts, Jesus on his throne, uh, Jesus that is to come to take his beloved bride home. This is Jesus uh, we were talking about. And uh, uh, the Brown preached so many messages in respect of that. Uh, so we know that uh, it's a different thing altogether. The world is celebrating something, but that's not a purpose why we are here. We are here to worship our God. We are here to serve him. Like Ruth, after he has made a decision, uh, serve and I, a decision, and uh, every decision goes with service. It goes with some kind of commitment. And uh, we're trusting God to help us again this morning. Um, but the team has gone to a message of Grace Tabernacle. Brother Isaac is in, uh, uh, is in Budumbura at the moment. And uh, uh, tomorrow, they will be here in church. Uh, tomorrow I'll go to Manfe, and on Sunday I'll be at uh, uh, Shama. So God bless you all. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, assembly, uh, Brother Daniel Amano, and uh, he's in just to share fellowship with us. And uh, uh, he will have this opportunity to greet the church before uh, we continue with the service. Please the mic. Amen. Oh, please put on the microphone. Is it working? Yeah. God bless you, church. I believe. 2,000 years ago, angels gave an announcement of good tidings and great joy. Yeah, yeah. And the shepherds could not join. One of these days, we we'll also sing the song of redemption, and the angels cannot join. When we are going to crown him, we shall sing, All Heal the Power of Jesus' Name. Let angels portrait for bring forth the royal diadem yes and crown him lord of laws until that time god bless you Amen. Yeah. god bless you brother daniel and uh, yes that's what we are waiting for assure us uh, no one entered the ark and god destroyed the world with flood as sure as Abraham came from the land of the Mesopotamian to the promised land, as sure as Isaac had a covenant confirmed to him as a son promised to Abraham by God on the natural side, as sure as uh, Jacob came on the scene, later on his name was changed to Israel, the twelve sons came out of him, and a nation was made. Right from that time until today, many things should happen. Along the line, this nation went to Egypt and came out of Egypt back to the promised land. Along the line, there was a promise made that before the Messiah will come again the second time, there will be an establishment of the nationhood of Israel. And if, if you are in the world, you don't believe anything. You don't believe scripture. You've got to believe this one. Because uh, that makes the Bible really authentic. Israel scattered the world over. Way back in 1870, they were scattered. In the year 1948, in our generation, 
the six-point star of David, start flying again. Now, there is a nation that today referred to as Israel. All other scriptures definitely will one day come to pass. And what we have to focus on and what we have to look out for. Later on, we'll come and continue with our subject. There are a lot of things we have to say. Time will not permit us. So I will go straight to the subject. We want to be on our feet, take the Bibles, and read from the gospel, read from the, uh, the epistles, read from the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and... Uh, uh, about an hour or two to speak and encourage ourselves by the will of God. So you are welcome if a stranger and a means, God bless you. You are welcome. We are here to adore our God. We are here to worship him. We have time to worship him before we go and uh, we trust him to help us. Hebrews the ninth chapter and uh, we are reading from verse 24. So let's uh, all join in reading the word. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with the hands. I hope we understand that. Which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself up. As a high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For them as he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. I hope we get that. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, he shall appeal the second time without sin unto salvation. I want to read this portion. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of men. And unto them that look for him, there's a promise for them that are looking for him to come. He will, he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. May the Lord add his blessing to a reading of his word. Please go have your seats. So, God bless you all. Thank you for coming to church. And uh, this is from the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews is a special book like uh, many of us have had opportunity to uh, read that portion of scripture. And uh, we all believe that it was written uh, by the Apostle Paul. And the key word in the book of Hebrews is better. And the book of Hebrews is a, a series of contrasts uh, between the good things of Judaism and the better things of Christ. So we find contrasts, Christ and the angels and uh, many, many, many other things. Christ and the high priest, the lambs that were, the sacrifices that were made and the final one, which is Christ himself, the perfect one, and that is all what the book of Hebrews is about. So, if you have time, find time to read it, talk about Christ and the angels, it talks about uh, um, the natural rest that God gave to the children of Israel, and the eternal rest that we have in him, uh, talking about the Sabbath. Uh, he talks also to us about the high priest 
One high priest comes and goes, one high priest comes and it goes, but we have one, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have the better things of Christianity. This morning, we want to look at uh, the message of the prophet preached in 1963, L-O-O-K, Luke. There's so many messages about some six, seven messages of Abraham to the unseen. Look away to Jesus. Look. So we want to dwell on the word look this morning. Also, we look at what we are to expect, what our focuses must be on. So this morning is on the subject of look. When we look at the word look, one, look means to direct your eyes in a particular direction. People have their looks. So it talks about uh, the appearances. Look. There are so many definitions, madam. What we want to look this morning is to direct our eyes on a particular direction. So just our patience, let's have patience with ourselves as we look at this subject of Luke. Now, So, when you hear the word look, it's because of somebody is trying to get you to see what they are looking at. What do you say? They want you to see. Sometimes you might be driving and uh, you find out that somebody has made a mistake. Say, look, 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 look. You point him to a direction, you kind of thing. So, you hear, look. And as you see now, right now, everybody is looking for something to happen. The things that you have, when you hear the word look, it's because of somebody is trying to get you to see what they are looking at. What are you saying? They want you to see. Sometimes you might be driving and uh, you find out that somebody has made a mistake. Say, look, 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 look. You point him to a direction. You get him to see something so that you get him away from danger or that kind of thing. So, you hear, look. And as you see now, right now everybody is looking for something to happen. The things that you are envisaging that will happen, you're looking out for it. Oh, this will happen. So you are looking out for it. You are under great expectation that uh, this will happen. So everybody is looking for something and looking for something to happen. We know that in this world, nations, are always looking to the skies, constantly watching the skies, because they have shot things into the atmosphere, I mean to the skies. Somehow we have satellites, we have objects in a, a orbit. They are looking out for information with the things that they, they have shot into the uh, skies. So they are looking uh, for things, many at times for defense purposes, you know, they have instruments, they have gadgets that are over there for spying, for whatever. They want it to be there. So they are always looking out for something. Yes. Individuals, institutions, manufacturers are looking out for things. No matter what situation that they are in, they are looking out for something. 
if you take car companies, uh, they are looking out to build better cars than what they have built in the previous years. Institutions are looking forward to improve upon their load. Every institution, even we, everybody is looking up to better his Lord, to be better than tomorrow, uh, improving upon our Lord. And that is the way we must live. We cannot be stagnant. We must be dynamic. So we look at to do better. Do better than yesterday. Improve upon our Lord. Yes, because humans are different from other, other creatures. If you take the bears, the way they beat their nurses, that's the same with the beating every now and then. Uh, but if you look at the humans with souls, uh, our housing styles are changing every now and then. There's, there's a lot of improvement. There's a lot of uh, advancement in many areas of human endeavor. That is humans improving upon all, looking forward to better our Lord, looking forward to have a better kind of living. We look up to, we look forward. Yes. So everybody is looking, nations are looking up uh, for uh, maybe more territories uh, that they can spread themselves. The church like this is also, uh, the churches are also looking for more members. Take the church natural. They are looking out for more members. They will take church building, looking out for more members without much understanding of what the scripture says about that. You see? But the bride of Christ is looking for the coming of a Lord. If you're part of the bride, there might be something you're looking out for today. Yes. We are not looking out for more members. We cannot put, like I used to say, we cannot put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. We cannot take your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life. The purpose of the preaching is to uh, catch the rainbow trout fish, to catch the predestinated, to cut them that are about dead unto life eternal. Uh, so my sheep hear my voice. I uh, have the voice of a stranger that we know here. So as the word of God goes forward, um, uh, we're looking forward for God's predestinated CJ. The bride is looking for the coming of the Lord. And for the scriptures we just read, Paul was saying that. We are looking for his second coming. We're looking for him to come and take his beloved bride home. And that is why we are here. We're looking for the rapture. We are looking for the changing of our bodies. There might be something before us that we must be looking at that will direct uh, our thoughts, our beings, and whatever we do. Yes. If you are not looking out for something, why are you here? You might be something definitely you might be looking out for. And the young is looking out for this. Some are looking forward to get married. Some are looking forward to better the education. Some are looking for this. What are you looking for? There might be something you are looking for. We cannot live anyhow. Idle. Just walk around the place. There might be something we must be looking forward for. And that determines how we live. Yes. That determines how we live. So Paul is saying, looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ the second time. Looking for him. And in order to do that, you've got to see something before you uh, can tell somebody else to look at what you are saying. To them, to us who are looking for a first coming. Years ago when we got into this message, we got into this message to prepare to meet the Lord. We got into this message for the rapture because we know that this is the age. It has been proven beyond doubt that we are living in the closing moments of time. We can run through scriptures from Genesis to where we are today, uh, right from the Garden of Eden when uh, the man and the woman fell and God had to drive them out from the place and uh, um, the duration started and there came no one. After no one, we have Abraham, after Abraham, we have uh, Isaac, the Isaac, uh, we have the 12 tribes, after the 12 tribes, we talk about Joseph, we talk about Moses, we talk about Joshua, um, um, uh, we talk about the judges in scripture, and then after that, uh, uh, Israel demanded a king. They want to be like the rest of the nations. They want to look like the rest of the nations. Though they want to look like the rest of the nations, they want to maintain uh, their being uh, God's uh, people. And that's the problem. Uh, we want to serve God 
at the same time we want to look like the world. That is organizational spirit. That is organized religion. Israel wanted to look like the rest of the people. But yet still, they want God to be in their midst. So we see in the course of history, Israel demanded a king for a king. God gave them one. Then after that, they have kings along the line. The kingdom divided into two. The southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. But God sent all of them prophets. There are prophets to the southern kingdom. There are prophets to the northern kingdom. And it was like that. And the issue ran its course. Then finally, the prophecy that was given in the book of Genesis concerning the seed of the woman uh, bruising the head of the serpent came to pass. God put on human flesh and woke amongst men. That was Emmanuel, God with us. The person of Jesus Christ. He had a purpose because man had fallen and a man fell when he was in flesh. God had to be in flesh to uh, bring man out of that uh, a situation. So by one man sin came into the world, but another man, we have grace and abundance, we have salvation, we have redemption, we have, and everything ran its course. Till finally, Jesus offered himself like we have read, once and for all. Then after that, what happened? God, before that, has been dealing with the Jews. Yes, right from Genesis chapter 11. In Genesis chapter 11, we see humanity as one big string. In Genesis chapter 12, God picked a man out from that, and that was Abraham. And he started a nation with him. And from Genesis chapter 12 to Acts chapter 2, God has been dealing with the Jews. It's all about Israel. God raised the prophets from among them, revealed his will to them. They wrote the scriptures, and it has been dealing with them till on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, himself came down and uh, filled his people. But in God's program, along the line, there will be a calling in of the Gentiles. Now, before that, if anything is said about a Gentile or whatever it is, it is because of his connection with Israel. Without Israel, there's no Bible. Yes. And for us in this generation to come and see that this nation, as a, um, uh, what can I say, uh, still the test of time. So we still have Israel today, but not like the Israel of old. So from Genesis chapter, uh, Acts chapter 2 going, after the coming down of the Holy Ghost, Peter made it clear what God is going to do. And then later on we find out that uh, the Gentiles came in. In Acts chapter 8, our Jews, the Samaritans came in. In Acts chapter 10, the Gentiles came in. In Acts, uh, from Acts chapter 13 going on, after Saul became poor, the message went to the Gentile world. But God has his own program. With the Gentiles, God is going to deal with them in seven major uh, ages. So, after everything has been done, we find out that John remained behind because God has something to show to John. So on the island of Patmos, there came John. The Lord himself appeared to him and he made him to understand that Gentile program is to be in seven ages. So we have seven churches in Asia Minor. These churches had within them certain characteristics that are going to characterize the successive coming church ages. So we have Ephesus to Laodicea. Now with history and scriptural bargaining, we can find out that we have run through all the ages and this is the last church age. The Laodicean church age. The Laodicean church age is a Pentecostal church age. But in Laodicea, after the Pentecostal bride has been called, there will be the final bride. But Abraham preached so many messages like the sin shall not be out with the short. So we find out that we live in a closing moment of time. We are living at the time of the, of the home going, of what the scripture refers to as a rapture. Rapture is people being taken out from the surface of the earth. Major thing without saying that. 
And those that have seen death will be changed. And those that have not even seen church also will be changed. It has been a single thing. One man, one man, one man. So we find Enoch going up in the rapture. Later on, we find Elijah going up in the rapture. One man, one man. Later on, the Lord came on the scene. He died and rose again from the dead. But in this closing moment of time, it's not going to be one man. It's going to be many, many, many people that will be changing your bodies. So we are looking, we are living in the closing moments of time. Now the question is that, what are we looking for? After all these years of being on the earth, what are we looking for? And when we look, what do we see? Look unto me from all the ends of the world. The Lord says so. So this morning, we just want to look at what we have to look for and how we have to look for it and how that we must be very focused in life. And we want to call a few characters on account of time to make our subject so clear to us. So, we as believers, today I loved him, I'm looking for his coming. And uh, in order to do that, you've got to see something before you can tell somebody else to look at what you are looking. Now, the thing is that, what are you telling others to look at? You can tell no man to look at anything except you are looking at something and you find it so vulnerable that you can call the other man's attention. Brothers and sisters, young ones especially, you must know what you are looking for. You must know why you come to church. It's not just joining daddy and mommy to come. You must have a stand. You must know why you are here. Yes. Now, let's call Noah. Now, no one had an experience of this looking. And he, by faith, he saw the coming of a flood. Noah, we all know the Noah account. We can go back to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Noah came on the scene, as the scriptures say that when men begin to multiply on the surface of the earth, a woman will burn unto them. Yes, and the women were very fair. And there was violence on the surface of the earth. Morale, morals has gone down so low. There's nothing like marriage. People are just living anyhow, like in our age, where there was a population explosion. Back then, there is now population explosion. The fairness of the women, the beauty of the women, the beauty is bought in shops. There are so many beauty and handsome products to make the women so fair, so beautiful. They became irresistible to the men. And men fell at the shrine of women. And men made this beauty and enhancing product to beautify the women. And we can see it all around. Flashing red light, sign of his coming. Yes, we are this the age of beauty. Beautiful women, irresistible. Morals has gone down so low, there's nothing like marriage. There's one man in this nation. He calls himself a marriage counselor. I don't know where is, 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 which book is using. He quite recently uh, put something on the net that uh, premarital says glorifies the Lord. That is a nonsensical thing. He doesn't know what is fornication. Fornications, uh, fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The scripture talks about us to flee fornication. Yes. Because they look at, look at. Uh, today the sex act is uh, so done, I don't know, crushed down, no respect, nothing of the sort. It took one art to bring the whole world down. Only one art. That is why we hit against fornication, adultery, immorality, filthiness, licentiousness, concupiscence, con and all sexual immorality. Because that is what brought the world down. Yes, only one art. Look, a man can be so great. He can be a preacher, he can be a politician, he can be a king, he can be whatever it is. One art will bring that man down. Whether it's a preacher, whether it's a king, whether it's a politician. Why? Because that is what brought the whole world down. Sexual sin is hardly to forgive. Yes, and that is the only sin we commit with our bodies. That is why the Lord told the prophet, don't drink, don't smoke, don't defy yourself. 
We don't believe in filthiness over here. If you want to marry a woman, you must keep away from her. You must live a clean and a pure life. Yes, you must conduct yourself around her. Yes, sir. Because that is what brought the whole world down. In the days of Noah, it was so. The morals are so God and so low. We believe in holiness. We believe in purity. God says, I'm holy. Be ye that holy. We don't believe in filthiness. There's only one sin you commit with the body. And that is sexual sin. Yes. That is why it must not be lightly taken. That is why it must not be joked with. That is why you must not make room for that. Young ones, brothers and sisters, after the fall, God puts the sex act in the marriage covenant. Outside of the marriage covenant, you are not supposed to know a woman. Yes. Yeah, the word is full of filth. The adverts are sexual. The dancing is sexual. Having a dressing is sexual. Women have gone so down low that they are naked on the streets. Some in their bikinis, their swimming pants, and some come on the net and uh, almost naked. And these are called celebrities. These are falling stars. They are not our example. That's why we must dress and cover ourselves. When man fell, church, young ones, old ones, when man fell, when God came, he clung man. Yes. Because he says that, expose the nakedness of man. The holy veil that was covering the man and the woman was broken on that day. And when it was broken, and Adam came to realization of that, he ran away and hid from God. Adam, Adam, where are thou? So I'm hiding. Have you done what I told him how to do? Yes. Your nakedness is not for the outside. Yes. It's only in the marriage covenant that a man is naked and a woman is naked, and they are not ashamed of themselves. But today, nakedness is on the streets. The dressing and everything is there. That's why we talk to our young men and young women over here. Most of us are young women. And uh, the only one. I mean, don't dress in such a way to portray your figure. Yes. Yes, you can't dress like that. You can put on transparent clothing. Yes. Because one, God wants you to be covered. The men the same. He covered the men, he covered the women. So way back in the days of Noah, we find out that there was population explosion, and that is what we are in now. And the women were fair, beauty and handsome plural, to make them so beautiful, so irresistible. And today, they have even gone beyond their bounds. Some have tattooed their whole bodies. I don't, want, I don't know what human beings are looking for. So there was a population explosion. There was fairness of the women. Uh, there was violence on the surface of the earth. People have no respect for their bodies. But we are called to have respect for our bodies. Yes. Flee fornication. Young men, young women, flee fornication. Run away from sexual immorality. Run away from the filth. Run away from the road. Yes. And to our young women, you must know, when you play around that area, you will suffer at the end. Yes. Don't let any man fool you. Oh, if I don't kiss you, I'll not marry you. Oh, if I don't know you, I'll not marry you. That is foolishness of the highest order. At the end of the day, you will suffer. Yes. When a woman gets pregnant, where is the man? Where is the man? Where is the man? The man is nowhere to be found. He has run away. He can't deny. And we, we, we might be as, as sensitive to the taste of the spirit to be able to know the very appearance of evil. It's so bad. Paul said, let no these things be mentioned amongst you. Fornication, adultery, jestiness and jokings. The church is a holy church. Now, let me tell you something, church. God is coming for a sin-free church. A church that have dominion over sin. A church where the people do not use the members as instruments of unrighteousness. Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. I'm beseeching you, young men, young women, to hold yourself, to hold your members, 
in our exchange, ran away from fornication. That is our sanctification. Yes. So, when the world reached that stage of that foot and road, where we are now, God called a man. The scripture says that no one finds grace in the sight of God. Yes. And God called him for a purpose, to be a rebuke for that uh, age. And uh, he had people with him to enter there. And we have been called in this age to be a rebuke to this age. Yes. We cannot follow the trends of the world. Our sisters cannot dress like the other women in the world. Our brothers the same. We can do that. God must have a witness. What are we looking for? Noah had a spirit. And he, by faith, he saw the coming flood. He saw judgment coming. And the genuine believer in this age, we have eyes to look unto the unseen. And he will see judgment coming. Yes. Yes. Noah saw the flood. He saw judgment coming. He saw a great way, rain, that was going to cover the earth, uh, wash up the earth, and rededicate it to God again. Noah saw the future of his day. And the people have got into that foot than what you can think of. And because of that, there must be a washing off. This age has got to that place. That is why there's coming a judgment. It's not going to be water, it's going to be fire. Yes, to cleanse the earth, to wash everything out. So Noah saw the flag. God grant us revelation. If we can see what is ahead of us, if we can see what we have to look at for, it will change our outlook, it will change our life, it will change our commitment, it will change our dedication, it will change our way the, the way we look at the things of the world. Yes. Look. Have a focus in life. This was preaching in uh, April 1963 when Brother Brown uh, finished preaching the seal, so he had to talk about the seal seal. He, talk, he had to talk about the great interruption that is coming uh, concerning the elements, concerning nature, concerning the moon, concerning the stars, concerning the earth. You can go back to Revelation, the sixth chapter, uh, from verse 12 downwards to read about the sixth seal, which is about the great tribulation, which is about interruption of nature and that kind of thing, which will follow by the pageant of the earth for the millennial reign to set in. First, there had to be a cleansing, you know, and that is what the church today, and what I want to point to you to as a church, that we need a cleansing. The whole world is facing cleansing. There's going to be a cleansing. Yes, it's not church matter. There's going to be a cleansing. And that is what we must be looking at. There's no joking, there's no filthiness, there's no rottenness. There's going to be a cleansing. Yes, if you go to Malachi, the fourth chapter, and say, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn us an oven. It will burn the proud and the wicked. Yes. It will crash things on the earth. Yes. But unto them that fear the name of the Lord, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his hands. So there's going to be a healing campaign before that. Church, I want to say this before we continue. It's about healing. Because this age has witnessed healing on our high side. And this is to inspire faith in us. God help us to have faith, to believe in for what the word says concerning healing of our bodies. If we believe that we have been saved by faith and that pertains to our souls, there's something that we have to believe. That's the healing of our bodies. And we must not take that for job. Yes, yes. Now, is sickness here and there, and uh, when you say, oh, this one is sick, that one is sick, then the question is that, what are we doing with our faith? What are, are we doing with what we believe as believers? What are we doing? This is the hour that we must rise, because he has already raised him with healing in his wings. There have been healing campaigns all over the place. Uh, it's, 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 sometimes, it's unbelievable the things that God did in our age. And it's for us to have faith. All the sicknesses that we can think of, our pressure, and so, so, and so, and that kind of thing. 
at the beginning of this message that we're looking at, uh, Brother Brown was talking about music, um, and uh, he has these few things to say. First, let me read them. I read you some, a little bit, thing, and we continue. Noah had a revelation of the flag and was looking for the destruction of the world because uh, uh, God will not uh, let the world go on like that. He has to warn them in judgment. And he judged the people in Noah's days because of all that happened. He judged the people in the days of Lord, in Sodom and Gomorrah days, before, because of all that was happening. So, but I'm talking on music. That is another area we must actually uh, be very serious with it. If you say a musician, if you say, there's something. You say, no, let us not take anything for granted. Because music has a role to play in the church of the living God. And Brother Brown speaking of music. He said, there's nothing like music. You know, God hears by music. God heals by music. And when we come to church, I want us to come here with expectation. Yes, for your healing, for whatever you are asking God for. Yes, you can be that one man. Yes, at the pool of Bethesda. There were so many people there. There were so many. You know, these days we read in scriptures about Jesus said that, this happened that, that happened that. It's to inspire faith in us. Yes, there's nothing that God cannot heal. He will do it here. Don't look elsewhere. Look at yourself in the light of the scriptures. When you are playing music, play with all your heart. Play with all your soul. It should not be found that you are being forced to do something. Because God is by music. You can come to church so down, so low. And that's why he pays to come and sit on 30 minutes before the time. With, uh, have, have, have instructed the musicians uh, the things that they should be playing within that time. Some of them think they can play some classical music. That is nonsense. We have a message we are following. If you want to be here, do as the prophet said. Let's play music like down at the cross where my Savior died. Down for cleansing, my soul was taken care of. In the cross, in the cross, amazing grace. How sweet is the sound. Look, we used to be a church. That is so much so in only believe songs. Today we come to church and sing any other song. Sometimes we sing some of the songs and you must be wondering what we are singing. Songs like uh, Allah Babani. We are not Muslims. The Muslim God is Allah. It's not Jehovah God. Let's stop singing that song, Allah Babani. We are not Muslims. Yes. Yeah, we sing some songs. You know, it's a common song to most of people. You see, like we take them for granted. Allah Babani, are we Allah? Allah people. Are we Allah people? We are Jehovah God. The Muslims don't believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that he just uh, somebody, a uh, prophet and that kind of thing. Our Bible never teaches us that. Our Bible teaches that Jesus is God. Yes. He's the everlasting father. The mighty God. Yes, the counselor. Uh, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. The Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ of the New Testament. Jesus Christ is not Allah Babani. Yes, any song they sing, we used to sing it. Let's check our songs. Yes, if they are local currencies, it must line up with the word. Yes, not everything they are singing outside that we sing. Because God hears by music. God will not heal you by Allah Babani. Because God is not Allah. Yes, you love the Lord? You say, Brother David, where is this is coming from? So if you're a musician, please take it serious. Because God is by music. You know? God is by music. Do you know that? God is by music. Yes. God used David to touch Saul by music. Yes. Sometimes you know what music does. When you are just in, the, in your room and you are playing things, uh, gospel songs. Yes, I mean, the real ones. Know what the Jezebels are singing over there because they mentioned the name of Jesus Christ, so it's a gospel song. No. We are talking about songs. God is by music. Yes. 
Yes. God heals by love. God heals by medicine. God heals by medicine also. Yes. Yes. You understand that? God heals by medicine. He heals by love. He heals by prayer. God has many ways of healing. Yes. So if you take a tablet, you pray over it. That is why our faith must grow and grow to where it must go. God heals. God is the healer. This church must rise up to that. Yes. There's a lot we got to talk about. We must believe God in healing. That God is a healer. We must be able to pray for ourselves, pray for our wives, pray for our children. Wives, pray for yourself. Children, pray for yourself. Uh, they say we shall lay hands on the sick. You are a believer. Lay hands on where the problem is. Yes, we must rise up to that. God is by love. Yes. We must show love to one another. He said, sometimes a little love, stretch out. We just cure an old sore, old place that has been grown or something. It will heal it right over. Just a little laugh, a little curl. He said, sometimes we are way down, you know. You don't know what to do. And then you put on the music on. And yeah, you started tapping on the floor, and then you find out that you are rising up in spirit and that kind of thing. Let's put everything at our disposal to where it must be. God is the healer. Let's believe him to heal us. One of his attributes is to heal. Yes. Let me just uh, say these few things and we continue. Now, brothers and sisters, before I continue, if we could believe that our soul can be saved by faith, which we all believe here, all of us believe that our souls have been saved. All of us believe that we are believers. And we believe that uh, uh, it is by um, uh, faith that our souls have been saved. And if we believe that, how much more ought we to believe that our body can also be healed by faith? Church, it's a challenge to all of us. We have so many sick monsters. They do not, despite that, that God has done so many wonderful things. He had healed so many people. Yes, sir. Still, there are more to be healed. And let's believe for each other. And let's believe for ourselves. And if we believe that our souls have been saved by faith, how can't we believe that our bodies can be healed by faith? That's a challenge. Yes. Why are we here? We must enjoy the things of God. The redemptive blessings that has been given to us must be enjoyed by each one of us. I want to be in good health and above all, prosper in the faith, prosper in joy, prosper in this. Don't give room for anything. Don't give room for any sickness. Pray against it. Whether by medicine we have to take, whether by prayer, whether by love, by prayer talks all. Oh. Yes. Let's encourage ourselves. Yes. Sickness and health. What do we want? We want health, good health. Yes. I want to be in church at any point in time. I don't want to be somewhere else. I want to be in church. If we want God to heal you, it's for what purpose? It's to serve him. Yes. But sickness will come. Definitely it will come. That's God's permissive will. It will come for God to display the attributes of healing. Yes. So if you believe that our souls have been saved by faith, we must believe that our bodies can also be healed by faith. You see, believing for our bodies to be healed by faith seems to be really hard and difficult, you know. But we must remember that all things are possible to them that believe. Now, whatever we read in scripture now, we must take it. Yes. No joke about it. If you say this and shall follow us, pray for that it must be there. 
We must rise up to the occasion. Because these scriptures are not put down in the Bible for Bible for being there. He said, all things are possible to them that believe. Then we must be in that class that believe that all things are possible. Yes. You don't, 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 don't push it to no man else. Yes. Divine healing is an act of faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. Jesus did not just redeem us from our sins and transgressions, but he also healed us from our sicknesses. At that very moment, the thing is sin and sickness. If you go back to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, there you see it. Well, the scripture says that it was wounded for my transgressions. It was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So we have two things. We have something to deal with our sins. And then we have something, the same art, to deal with our, with our uh, sicknesses. So... That the, our problem is all, all of us is that well, we believe that our sins are forgiven. We believe that when we uh, confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But what about sicknesses when they attack us? We must rise to the occasion. Mothers, fathers, young and old. Isaiah 53 is a reality. Yes. It's not just a thing in scripture. But it takes faith to be able to claim and believe God's promises. You know, faith is an evidence of things so far. Faith is an evidence of things you do not see, you don't taste, you don't hear, you don't touch. Faith believes God's word. No matter what the circumstances, no opposition there is. If you are a true Christian believer, divine healing is a sure promise of God for you. Brothers, sisters, enter into the tabernacle. Divine healing is promised for us. We, if we are here, we must believe in divine healing. Yes, we must believe that God is the sick. No matter what the sickness is, no matter what our challenges are, no matter what our problems are, when any sickness attack, we must also attack it and pray our way through. We must not joke with sickness. The same way we don't joke with sin. The same way, we must not joke with sicknesses. Because all of us don't joke with sin. If you see fornication come, you run away. If you see adultery come, you don't pass there. If you see lie, you run away. If you see this, you run away. When you read that in scripture, you don't want to be part of it. When you even have to go wrong, you want immediately, as a true believer, confess your wrongs and ask God for forgiveness and that kind of thing to be able to continue on your Christian race. How do we treat sickness? Do we treat it the way we treat sin? But they are all in our torment. Our transgressions were taken care of and our sicknesses were taken care of. So we must not joke with sin and we must not joke with sicknesses. Yes. Yes. It's all by faith. It's all by faith. If you're a true Christian believer, Divine healing is a sure promise of God for you. And a true servant of God will never deny Jesus' own teaching regarding divine healing and miracles. The place of miracles is not yet past. The gift of healing by the Holy Ghost is a promise unto us, unto God's children, unto every one of us. He was wounded for our transgressions, and with his stripes we are healed. There's no man on earth that can heal you. No doctor, no hospital, no medicine. We haven't got one medicine that can heal. It just ate nature. God is the healer. No matter whatever we do, we know that God is the healer. So we must fall on him. Let us not joke with sickness. You hear somebody is sick? Please pray for that one. Yes. Encourage that one. The same way we don't joke with sin, let us not joke with sickness. We love the Lord. Can we continue? What's the time?
How can you say that? Noah had a revelation of the coming flood. So he was looking out for the judgment of God to come upon the surface of the earth. And he prepared himself. Yes. He prepared himself. There's a cleansing coming. So, let us be up and doing. When Israel came to their own land in this our age, they came with the mind that they're coming to see the Messiah. And when you see Israel, when you see the fig tree putting forth his bats, that is an end sign. Israel being a nation now is a sign that time is at the end because Israel is a nation today. We see things happening like that to the world. And with all that is happening today, the world is blind to it. Brothers and sisters, these are, they are fulfilled scriptures in our age. When we get to Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 32nd verse, it said, when you see the fig tree, it said, now learn a parable. When you see the fig tree putting forth his bats, then you know that summer is near, even at your door. And this is the age. The fig tree is Israel. We see all the other trees putting forth their bats. We see Israel today as a nation. I said, when you see that, then you must know that summer is near. You must know that it is even at your door. And scriptures cannot lie. This is the age that is standing at the door and knocking. I hope you get that. I said, when you see the fig tree put forth its bats, then you know that it's coming is near. Summer is near. And it's at your door. And when you get back in the book of Revelation, concerning this age, he has come as far as, as our door. And knocking. So you see the two scriptures. Summer is near. He is at the door. And this age is at the door knocking. So now, to the rest of the world, Israel is just there. Oh, uh, people don't even want them to exist. And since they came there, the, many of the Arab nations says, look, we shall cause the uh, non-existence of Israel. We shall wipe them away. We shall throw them into the Mediterranean. Since 1948, they have not been able. They have not been able because before the Lord came for the second time, the nationhood of Israel must be there. And uh, the believers know that that is a sign of the coming of the Lord. The world never knew about that. The way to them, Israel is just a troubled nation. As tiny that Israel is, no nation can overthrow it. We must believe God. No matter how small we are, until God is finished with us here, enter into the rapture, they can do nothing. That's why we are not to build our hopes on things over here. Nobody can help us. Our help coming from the Lord. Yes. We have seen the sign of his coming. We have seen Israel become a nation. No nation can stop him. No matter how big they are, how small they are, Israel will finish them. Yes. They have the best of lands today, the best apples, the best flowers. The land has been changed. The deserts have been changed into something else. Just for God to alert us that is coming. What are we looking for? Church, what are we looking for? Yes. So, the bride today, the call out today, knows that the coming of the Lord is at hand. Regardless of how much we have been able to go in progress and so forth, and succeed that in splitting our tongues and whatever it is, the coming of the Lord is at hand. We have seen nations breaking, nations coming apart, the world coming apart, the church moving and coming apart. Then we have thought that we are going to receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. But as these things begin to happen, the church binds itself together tighter and tighter by the word of God. It is a great day that we are living in. We see everything falling apart. Yes, nations are breaking. Israel is awakening. The signs that the prophet foretold, 
Gentile days are numbered with arrows and cumbrae. Nations cannot hold nations. Dictators cannot hold their subjects. Uh, heads of states cannot hold their subjects. We have tried all from democracy. We have tried all the economies of the world. We have tried capitalism. We have tried communism. We have tried socialism, liberalism, whatever it is. Nothing can solve the problem. The problem is human heart. Yes, the things are very fine on paper. Oh, when we practice communism, everybody will enjoy. Oh, the cake will be shared equally. Lie, lie. There will be people at the top. Yes, they will enjoy more than those below. Yes. Yes. So everything is falling apart. None of the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is falling upon the earth. Let us look out unto our God. Yes. Let's look out unto our God. No party can help Ghana. No president can help Ghana. Yes. They are all humans like you are. They will try. They will try. Why this one say you are a thief? The other one say you too you are a thief. How can a man be a head of state? Head of state business is not business. Yes, like somebody that says that you cannot be a salary worker and be a billionaire. No. Because somebody pays you. Your pay is cap. How can you be a head of state and be a millionaire? Where is the money coming from? You're not in business. You are not in technology. You are not in farming. You are not in car manufacturing. Where was the money coming from? To be the third richest politician. This one says you are a thief. That one says you are a thief. Is that where we are building our homes in China? No. Everything is falling apart. But we receive a kingdom that cannot be moved. Yes. As we see things beginning to happen, the prophet says that the church must bind herself together. We must come together in holiness and purity. We must come together and check ourselves in the word of God, where we are falling, where we are standing, and all this kind of thing. Everybody is looking for something, and you might be looking for something today. To a, you might be looking today to a time you get home to eat your dinner. Yes, get this and get that. Looking to a family standing here and in there. But we are all looking out for something. And what are we looking for? As a group of believers today, assembled together, we want to fix our thoughts, our principles, and things upon the coming of the Lord. That is where the church must be. Yes. We must assemble together. We must fix our thoughts our principles and things upon the coming of the Lord, looking for Christ, who shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation to them that believe on him and are looking for him to come. Yes. And they that are looking for him for the second time, he will appear to them. Now we know that the word is Christ. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Hebrews 38 says that uh, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, it is the word that we look to. Yes. We got to look at what the word says. And when God came in Christ, it was an expression of what God was. And whatever he was, he ever remains because it's internal and cannot change. What I hope it gives us that God has not left us without a true witness in these days of confusion that we live in today. We are privileged people to have come to know the things that we know, to have come to have the full revelation of God, of Jesus Christ, that nothing can be added to it or nothing taken away from it. We have the revelation of Jesus Christ. God has never left his people without true witness. God is going to show the world by Jesus Christ, and if Jesus is the word, and God judges 
the world by Jesus Christ, then we know that it's, gonna, it's not going to judge you by any church. It's not going to judge you by the Methodist church, the Baptist church. It's going to judge you by the word. And we must know what the word says. Yes. Many people have no regard for the word. I mean, for the church, they make fun of the church. They look down upon the church and they say all manner of things. But that should not deter any person. If you're truly born again child of God, then you must know that you're a peculiar person. You are a call out person. Yes. Many people don't like the red church. Well, they say that uh, uh, condemns and say this and say that. But God must have a witness. And uh, in this age, he never left us without a witness. That's why he has given us a message. That's why he has given us his word. That is why he has given us his word to know what his will is. That's why we must go back to the word, the message of the hour. For the way we live in our marriage lives, in our dressing, in our walking, in our relationship with Christ. Yes. God could have led the son to preach, but he didn't do that. The moon, the stars, the wind, and that kind of thing. God had a voice. God had to raise a man. God had to borrow his members. God had to be there to speak his oracles through the fellow. When he came into the word himself, he was the word himself. That's why he didn't have to write any book. Many people just want to make Jesus Christ like any other ordinary man. Jesus Christ is God. Yes, he is the word. That's why he did not write any book. Yes, and everything is written about him. But he never wrote anything because he is the word. When he was on earth and was attacked by the Jews, he said, who can accuse me of sin? Sin is unbelief. Who can point their finger to me and say, I will not fulfill every word that was written of me? Would not it be glorious thing this morning, my brethren, my sisters, my, 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 my brothers, if the church of the living God could stand and say, who can accuse me of sin? Church, that's where we are. We are not here to play church. I must be able to stand and say, who can accuse me of this? Who can accuse us of this? Who can accuse me that I've not lived faithful as a wife? Who can accuse me that I've not lived faithful as a husband? Who can accuse me that I've not lived as a pastor should live? And this and this and this. This is the hour now that each one of us must rise up. Our Lord said, who can accuse me of sin? Who can accuse me of unbelief? Who can accuse us that we don't believe the way we must believe? Who can, who can accuse us that we don't believe in divine healing? We must rise up now. This is no joking. This is no church. May church be mess. Let's enter into scripture. Let's put ourselves in the Bible. Each one of us. And if Jesus stood and said, say the scriptures, they are there that testify of me. Who can accuse me? that I've not lived what the word says of me. Now we as a church, the word of God has spoken about us. So now, it is our turn now, as church, as individuals, to be able to stand and say, who can accuse us of this, of that, of this, of that? For we have lived it. Yes. We are not here to joke. Yes. If people will not come to church, people are just playing church. Today they are, they, they are jumping around all the places. That's all the reason why we are here. God became flesh and lived a life. So that's where we must come to. That is the challenge. Whatever promise that it made, we must see it. Yes. Don't take yourself out. Yes, don't take yourself out. Today is a holiday. Come to church and come and worship God, you see. What are the people doing? Come to church and worship God. God has been so good to us from the beginning of the year to up to this time. Come to church and worship God. 
Where are the people? What are they doing? Are they sleeping in their houses? Are they cooking rice to eat? What are they doing? What are the people doing? Do you believe that there's God? Do you believe that he created us? Do you believe that he gave us life? Do you believe that he has, prote he has been protecting us? He has been taking good care of us? Come and adore him. Come and sing his praises. Come and hear his word. Come and line up with the word. Where are the people? Where are the people? People want to be forced to serve God. People want to be forced to come to church. Coming to church also, they have to debate. Should I go? Should I not go? Should I go? Should I not go? It's only when trouble knock at their doors. Then you see them around. We shouldn't wait for trouble to knock. We must always be in spirit. We must walk in the light of the word. Yes. When trouble strikes, we know where we are standing. Yes. My brothers and sisters, what are we looking for? What has demanded our attention? What is our focus in life? We must be focused. We must look up to his coming. Yes. Look here at Noah. Look here for the flag. Because you have been told of the coming judgment. Is everything was in it. He prepared an ark. He did all that God wanted him to do. When the hour struck, God pulled him in the ark. And flooded. Has been in him and with him. Yes. It's not just a matter of coming to church. It's a matter of knowing him and dwelling in you and be with you. And there's assurance that he will be with us always to the close of the age. So we must be up and doing, you know. Let me read these few things and we close. We must focus our lives. Know what somebody else says. But focus our lives to him. He is the word. And if we get our lives lined up with the word, then the word and our life becomes the same. He said, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, then ask what you will. It will be granted to you. Verily I say unto you, if you say to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you have said will come to pass. You can have what you have said. Oh my. 
Now what I said, what you said, you can have it because you and him have become the same because the mind that was in Christ is in you. The mind that was in Christ was to fulfill the Father's word. If we have the mind of Christ, it is to fulfill the Father's word. It's to take these promises and walk in the light of it. Let the mind which is in Christ Jesus be in you. That is the mind. And the mind of that is in Christ Jesus in us we fulfill the word. Brothers and sisters, young and old, that's why we are here. We must rise to the occasion. We must be really focused people. Yes, Abraham was focused. When he was called, we are closing now. When he was called to come out, he was focused on the promise. He was prepared to leave his land. He was prepared to go where God is going to direct him. He was prepared to follow God's leadership. And no man follows God's leadership and will have regrets. There will be challenges. There will be up, there will be downs. But the thing is that what are we looking for? Abraham was looking for what God has promised him. And he walked in the light of it. And no matter what the challenges, an old man that he was, he still believed in the promises of God. He believed that he that made the promise is able to perform. Where are we believers? Where are we the children of God? What are we looking for? We must be focused. Abraham was focused. Yes. Because something has been placed before you. Moses was focused. He had been told a whole lot of things by his mom. But there has to come a time in his life then that what he has been told, he must now decide on it. Young ones, you have been brought to church enough. You have heard a lot of preachings. But now is the hour. You say, I'm young, I'm young. Oh, when I finish university, then I will be baptized. Uh, you have your, your life in your hands. You have heard about repentance. You have heard about changing your mind. Moses, how to come to a place to decide which way to go. Yes. Don't be bamboozled with the fashions of this world. Oh, I'm a young woman. And you two people might see that uh, I'm a person. You are which type of a person? A filthy person or a holy person? Oh, if you don't dress like them, then you, you, you are out. Dress the way you must be dressed. Yes. Let them see your dressing, which is the best. Yes. To me, the Christian dressing is the best. All this nasty dressing. This morning I met a, a niece of mine. I said, what have you done? She has gone to dye part of her hair. I said, can you take this to school? He said, no. So when school reopened, she, she must shave everything. I said, this is for Christmas. Yellow hair is for Christmas. I said, what has that got to do with the birth of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Yellow hair. Red lipstick for Christmas. We must thank God for salvation. We must thank God for everything that has delivered us from. Moses was focused. No matter what his mother has told him, no matter what you have heard from your parents, you cannot make a decision for yourself. Moses rose up. He told them in the palace, I am not a son of Pharaoh's daughter. I don't belong to the world. I'm not an Egyptian. I don't belong to this kind of dressing. I'm not just going to come to church for coming church sake. I am a believer. I will read the message. I will pray for myself. I will look out for the coming of the Lord. Yes. Your ones. Look out for the coming of the Lord. 
nothing will spoil. If you are to marry before the Lord comes, you will marry. If you are not to marry, you go in the rapture. Yes. You must decide now. It's not daddy's God. It's not mommy's God. It must be your God. What do you know? Do you know Jesus? Do you believe that there is God? Do you know what his word says? Moses was focused. He walked away from the pressures of sin. He walked away from the filth of Egypt. Moses had the greatest opportunity that any man could have. He was to be the next Pharaoh. He said, no. I am not an Egyptian. I don't belong to the world. Where do we belong? When you look, what do you see? We are called to be focused people. Focused on the world. Separate ourselves from filth, from wrath, from ungodliness. All these wretchedness we see around. It's not for us. There are people of the world. There are two kingdoms. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Which one do you belong to? Why do we want to copy the things of the kingdom of darkness? What's our problem? You are in the light. You saw some young girls in the world make their hair some light. I don't know. Is that what is attracting you? How can the spirit of God be in you and be attracted by worldliness? That's the question I want to ask. So, Brother David, you don't know. How can the spirit of God be in you and be attracted by worldliness? How can you belong to the kingdom of light and be attracted by the kingdom of darkness? When God, at the end of every day, at the end of the day, separated light from darkness. And he said, I'm God of the light. God is light. And in there's no darkness. Your sisters, why should we be attracted by the hairdos of the world? I don't understand. Which spirit is in you? Brothers, which spirit is in you? To be attracted by the things of the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. For if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, they are not of the Lord. And all these things will pass away. And they that love them will pass away with them. Yes. Why do we want to look like the world? Sisters, Brothers, are we looking for his coming? Are we looking for the change of our bodies? Are we looking for the ongoing? What are we looking for? Moses, with the promise, was focused. Joshua and Caleb were focused. And we must be focused people. Yes. What are we looking for? That's the question. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Abraham. Let me say more on Abraham and we close. On account of time. Abraham, when was asked to sojourn in a strange land? And look for the promise. He never doubted the promise. The Christian looks at the unseen. The Christian looks at the unseen. Remember, you are endowed with five senses. One of them is sight. But I'll prove to you, your sight don't see everything. Here right now, in this room, there are things happening. There are angels here, there are things happening. We are not alone here. Because his angels encamp around them that fear him. 
So the angels of God are here. There are so many things happening here. This is a natural eye, cannot see everything. But we need another eye to see. That can bring the things to us. Yes. So our senses is not all. Beyond that, there is a sixth sense. And that is faith. And we must be looking to Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate finisher of our faith. Now remember, the whole Christian armor is supernatural. If you are a Christian, you say seeing is believing. You can never be a Christian if you believe that. For faith is the substance of things of for, the evidence of things not seen. You cannot be a Christian and have to see the thing. The whole armor of God is supernatural. Yes. Love, joy, peace, faith, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness. All these things are unseen. And a Christian does not look at what he sees with his eyes. He looks at what he sees with his faith. And we must come to that. We must look beyond. Yes. We must look unto the unseen. We must look at our God who is invisible. We must see him as the all in all. Our protector, our guide, our provider, our healer, whatever it is. Yes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes. And faith can only be based upon one thing, and that is the word of God. Yes. Abraham saw it all. He did not look at any of the misunderstanding of the promise. What if he would have looked and said, here yeah, I'm 75 years old, and such and such and such and such. Uh, how can I have a baby? How can I have so, so and so? No. He was looking at what God said. Brady, at the time God gave Abraham the promise, Abraham was an old man. Sarah has passed monopause already. So it was not, the promise was not given at the time that, oh, you say, oh, hey, that's what this one is it's going to happen. The promises of God come at the time where you think that naturally with your human mind, it's impossible. Yeah. But it is possible. The one that is making the promise is the one that is going to bring the promise to pass. Yeah. Let's believe God for everything. Yeah. No matter what challenge we have, no matter what, the, what we are in, somebody in the Bible has passed through that. Is, is it healing we are looking out for? Abraham was not looking at himself. Abraham was not looking at himself. He was looking at the promise. Yes. When God said, leave where you are staying, he was prepared to leave. Because where the child will be born will not be in Mesopotamia. The child will be born in the promised land. So God gave him the promise to come from that place and come somewhere. That's God. God wanted us at a certain place, in a certain position. Yes. Look at the things that we have been looking at. Yes. Rebecca has to come from a place for the promise to be fulfilled in her life, to be the wife of that promised son, he has to leave a place by the angel messenger's message to come to another place. Brothers, let's take God at his word. Let's move by the word of God. Look, if you take a Bible, whatever you read, and it's a promise to you, believe it. Pray on it. Yes. Let's all look at on the unseen. That if God is asking me to do this and to believe his word, definitely this will happen. Yes. For Rebecca to be what she should be, she has to get from one place to another place. For Ruth to be what she should be, she has to leave. Let's leave everything behind us. We cannot enjoy the blessings of God when we want to be in the word and be in God. That's a problem. 
Oh, we don't see this. We don't see this. I don't see this. Let's move from where we are. Let's move from that state of unbelief. Rebecca, move. Yes. Moses, move. Yes. He has to leave the palace. Ruth has to leave the land of the Moabites. Rebecca has to leave where she was. Yes. You see, this is the Bible. Let's go help us to see the things. And be focused. Abraham was focused. No matter what anybody says, you are an old man. You are so, so, and so. He cannot happen. He is so, so, and so. He said, God made me the promise. God made us a promise of healing. Let's pray for our brothers. Let's pray for our sisters. There are many, many things. No man can help us except God. If we have to believe in prayer for the sick, it's now. Yes. You hear brother is sick and sister is sick. Please go on your knees and pray for that sister. Pray for that brother. Medical science can take us to some extent. But God is the all in all. Yes. God, there's no miracle that God cannot perform. There's nothing that is too hard for God to do. The only thing that we have to be focused. Abraham was focused. That God had made a promise. We'll bring it to pass. If we can focus ourselves to the plan of God, to, for what God wants us to, and what God promised us, and let everything else alone, no matter how long it is, just keep believing. Abraham, keep believing. Yes. Yes. Those of us that are growing a little bit old, you know, we always talk about old age, you know. But we can be strong. One day I came to church, and I was praying, I was praying outside. I said, oh, well, I'm growing old, you know, which I don't want to admit, you know. But I said, how old am I? At what age did God call Abraham? 75, I'm not 75. 75 was the beginning of Abraham's life. Yes. I'm not there. No, right now, my, these are going through inside my body. Like, you know, be so. But uh, <laughs> I want to go over that. Yes. 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 Because I asked myself, how old was Abraham when God called him? How old was Moses when God called him? No, things are going inside my body. I said, God help me. I always look to look at Moses. And I said, I'm not rich anywhere. This was the man. Let's rise up, young, old. Moses, I look at him. I said, Moses was a man. At 80, when he started leading the people, in the morning, he will be guiding. I believe in the evening, Moses will be writing. The first five books. We all know that writing not be small to you. Writing is not be small thing. And the man who wrote the five books of the Bible was in his 80s into his hundreds. Yeah, so, Brother David, times have changed. The diet, the things we eat are not what it should be. Yes, that's fine. But prayer can change it. God help us. Let us be focused. Yes. 2020 has been something. Oh. 2020 has been something. We started 2020. Now when we are going to war and our enemies are more than us, our hearts should not faint. Nothing should happen. We should stand fair. By, April, by March, April, May, the whole year has turned upside down. But we are here. Let us be focused. We are entering 2021. What that one will bring, we don't know. But we are asking our God to help us to be focused. Yes. And writing all the mistakes of the past and check ourselves 
because everybody has been told that the way it should live in the Bible. Whether we are Christians, whether we are wives, whether we are husbands, whether we are part of the body of Christ, whatever we are, our job specifications are already in Bible. We must all go back to the scripture and see how our fathers of old were focused. Abraham was focused. Moses was focused. Joshua and Caleb were focused. Yes. Not them alone. Who else? Look at all of them. They were focused. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were focused. They were looking at the promises of God. That is where we must be. And that is where this church must be. Whoever you are, pastor, ministers, church officers, husbands, wives, little ones, everything has been written in scripture for us. Fathers, mothers, let's believe God. Shall be on our feet. When we look, what do we see? Abraham looked at the promises of God. He was so focused. He saw the things coming to pass. Moses looked at the promises of God and was prepared to take the people out. God gave him the assurances that he would be with him and there's no cause for him to fear. When Moses left the scene, Joshua came on the scene. God gave him the promises and asked him to be focused and meditate upon the word day and night and will be a prosperous man. God help us to look up unto him, the altar and finisher of our faith, not to turn our eyes away from Jesus, away from the word, but our focus must be the word. We must look up for his coming. We must look up for the fulfillment of every bit of scripture to be fulfilled in our lives. If we are believing for the salvation of our souls, we must believe him for the healing of our bodies. We want to be a focused church, a focused family. Whatever we are doing, let's do it with all our mind, with all our strength. Let's have the Lord with our soul, with our mind, with everything. We are going to the Lord in prayer. We want the Lord to help us to really be focused people. Look up unto him like Abraham did, like Moses did. Like Joshua and Caleb said, if the Lord delighted in us, we take the land. And we are here to take every land. We are here to possess our possessions. We are here to press on the battle to higher grounds, to deeper depths of his word. Shall we pray? Let's pour our hearts before him. We want to serve him better. We want to be more focused. We want to look out for his appearing, his coming. And we want to serve him with all our might and with all our strength. Shall we pray?
most gracious heavenly father of our life and give out of every good gift we so thankful to thee O lord for your love coral message has brought to us thus far we thank you god for this morning for this afternoon o lord thank you for your word that has come forth O lord pray dear o father that you help each one of us o lord to turn our eyes upon thee o lord never to look elsewhere but look up unto thee, the author and finisher of the faith. Grant us the grace to be more focused, more determined, to love thee and to serve thee, and to walk according to your precepts and commandments. May our focuses be on the promises, and may we see thee as thou art. Thank you for bringing us thus far. We commit the rest of the meetings, Lord, into your hands. Pray for higher grants and deeper debts, Lord. May thou once again come and have its own way, Lord, with us. When our strife for us to live, may not take each one of us own sacredly. In Jesus Christ's name we pray with faith and thanksgiving. Amen. Please, you can have your seats. Let's have one song. Then after that, we'll give announcements. <laughs> 